Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys once again, and it's time for another movie review. Now, today we're going to be talking about three movies this time, all of which I saw in theaters over the weekend. Now, none of the three movies we're going to be talking about are brand new or anything. These are actually movies I've seen before, but saw them again at my favorite theater over the weekend. But hey, who, lo who doesn't love seeing movies on the big screen especially if it's one that you've seen before. Anyways, uh, let's talk about them. Now, the first film we're going to be talking about is one that I saw in theaters on Friday, and that is the 1998 dramedy film The Truman Show, which was directed by Peter Weir, who is also the same director of Dead Poet Society, and this film was originally released on June 5th, 1998. Now, I've seen this movie before two years ago, and I really enjoyed it, and... Um, the Metro Cinema did a screening of it on Friday as part of their 2024-2025 season launch. So I went to the screening and I had a really good time seeing it in the theater. And uh, in my opinion, this is one of Jim Carrey's best movies, but we'll get to more on that in a bit. But right now, let's get into the story of the film. So in this film, it follows a man named Truman Burbank, played by Jim Carrey. And um, he lives in a small town in America... He works as an insurance businessman. He's got a wife. And it seems like he's just living the normal American dream. Living the good life. But little does he know, since, since the day he was born, he's been a live television show that goes on the air 24-7. Basically watching his whole life fold around him. And then one day he starts to notice something's, something's not right with his life. And then he figures out that he's that that he's part of a big television show about his life. And he's trying to escape the town he lived in all his life. And try to set himself free. And without giving away too much, that's basically the story of the film in a nutshell. Now this is a really great film. It's definitely one of Jim Carrey's best films. And the storyline is so original and so well written that it's no wonder why it's considered a classic. Jim Carrey does a great job in the film. It's funny, it's dramatic, and it really is somewhat of a cautionary tale of like invasion of privacy and that kind of stuff, especially with like how Facebook and other social media groups like like and Google like monitor all the stuff you look at and just like algorithms and all that shit. While that it might be diff a lot different compared to the story of this film, I feel it's somewhat similar in my opinion, like privacy and all that shit. But uh, it's a really great film, and I know there's another movie that came out the same year as this movie called Ed TV with a very similar storyline. Although I haven't seen that movie, I hear it's not nearly as good as The Truman Show, but maybe I'll check it out someday. But uh, all in all, this is a great film, and I'd say this or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, one of those two has to be Jim Carrey's best movie for sure. But a uh, great film, everyone in the film, like everyone in the cast, including Laura Linney, Noah Emmerich, Ed Harris, and uh, uh, what's her name, Natasha McElhorn, or however you say her name, who played Karen in uh, Californication, she's in this movie. But uh, all in all, great film, and I had a great experience seeing this one in the theater with a big crowd. And if you haven't seen The Truman Show, definitely check it out. It's a classic, and I highly recommend it. Anyways, I'm giving The Truman Show an 8.7 out of 10. The next film I saw was on Saturday, and is one of, a fellow, one of Mackenzie Wheeler's favorite movies of all time. A fellow YouTuber friend of mine. By the way, shout out to Mackenzie Wheeler. Check him out on YouTube. And anyways, the film in question is the 2004 comedy film Napoleon Dynamite, which was directed by Jared Hess and was originally released on June 11th, 2004, so this film turned 20 this year. Now, I got a few things to say about this movie before we go any further. When I first watched this movie, this was like 9 years ago. I was 14 at the time. And for whatever reason, I wasn't really a big fan of it for some reason. I don't know why. But 
for a while I had been thinking about it and wanted to give this film another chance and when I saw that the Metro Cinema was going to be doing a screening of it I decided to check it out on the big screen and I can honestly say I like it a lot better than my when I first watched it but we'll get to more on that in a bit but right now let's get into the story of the film. In this film it follows a 16 year old boy named Napoleon played by John Hedder who lives at home with his grandmother and his 32 year old older brother and one day his grandmother gets into an accident and is recovering in the hospital so his uncle Rico moves in with the moves into the house until grandma gets better and Napoleon is a troubled student at school he gets bullied a lot in school. He gets he's just often looked down upon by others and doesn't have very many friends. And that all changes one day when he befriends a new student from Mexico named Pedro. And Pedro is trying to win the the school, the class election to become president of the class against a a, a mean teen girl named uh, Summer. So Napoleon and his decides to help out his new friend on winning the school election and without giving away too much that's basically the story of the film in a nutshell now i really enjoyed this movie i enjoyed it a lot more than i did on my first viewing of the film a long time ago it's funny it's entertaining and everybody in the film did a great job including uh john header and uh it's pretty funny too it's really entertaining I know some people say this movie hasn't really aged well. I can sort of see why that is, but it's still a really fun movie to watch. It's really funny. Uh, probably my favorite part of the movie is across the street from Napoleon's house. There's a neighbor who's like a farmer or something, and he has a shotgun to... He's putting one of the cows out of its misery. And it's on the morning where a school bus the school bus comes to pick up Napoleon and just as the school bus arrives the farmer pulls the trigger and all the kids start screaming that part was really funny but uh I really enjoyed this movie it's got a great soundtrack it's entertaining and considering uh I don't know I just I thought it was a really well-made film I just wish I felt this way about the film when I first watched it all these years many years ago like when I first watched it but now, I enjoy it more than I did when I was a teenager. Sometimes, if I don't like a, if I'm not a big fan of a movie the first time, if I rewatch it a few times, I might appreciate it more. It's kind of the case with a few other movies that I've watched over the years, and this is one of them. But uh, other than that, Napoleon Dynamite's a fun movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. You might like it, you might not, but I really enjoyed it. And I know there's also an animated series of Napoleon Dynamite, but I don't plan on ever watching it anytime soon, though. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm giving Napoleon Dynamite an 8.4 out of 10. And the last film we're going to be talking about is one of my all-time favorite movies, and that is the 2002 horror film 28 Days Later, which was directed by Danny Boyle and, writ and written by uh, Alex Garland. And this film was first released in the UK on November 1st, 2002, and then it was later released in Canada on June 27th, 2003. And uh, this film I saw in theaters on Sunday as part of the mystery screening at my favorite theater. And I actually figured out what the movie was following the clues that they uh, posted on the Instagram page uh, over the past few weeks, and they posted the last clue yesterday. And I kind of already knew what it was. But I was very happy to see it on the big screen. And I gotta say, it's a great experience seeing it in the in a theater. But let's get to the story of the film before we talk more about the movie. In this film, it follows a man named Jim, played by Killian Murphy, who one day gets into a bike accident and falls into a coma. And when he wakes up a few weeks later, he finds out that something has gone wrong while he was asleep. He wakes up to find that everyone seems to have disappeared before finding out that there was a virus in that there was a virus called the rage virus that causes people to turn into 
zombies that run fast and just are just really dangerous. He then meets up with a group of, group of survivors who are trying to figure out where to find Sanctuary to get away from the infected and try to get to safety. And that's pretty much the story of the film in a nutshell. Now, I love this movie. I loved it since the first time I watched it when I was 12 years old. I watched it when it aired on TV one night, and I just I fell in love with it. It was a really well-done film. It's actually I think this was one of the first horror movies I ever watched. I can't remember, though. But uh, it's a really well-made film. The acting is really well done. It's well-casted. It's well-made. It's well-shot. And it's, it's just one of my favorites. As a matter of fact... I even got a poster of it hanging on my wall. I got it from the Old Strathcona Antique Mall three years ago. I know I've shown it before in some of my other videos, but here it is again. I also love the music in the film. Like, the music in the film is really well done. And I really like the uh, cinematography and the camera work for this movie. I like how the camera, like... The movie has never gotten a restoration. Like, the way the camera looks in the film... Like, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It looks like it, was, it wasn't it was edited or anything. It's just how uh, Danny Boyle intended when he was making this movie. And it should be noted that this movie is one of the first movies to be shot entirely on... Shot entirely on digital instead of tape. Which is what's more common these days. But uh, I had a really fun time seeing this one in the theater. It's a great zombie movie. It's one of the best zombie movies ever made. And there is a sequel to this movie called 28 Weeks Later, which I have seen, and I thought it's a pretty good sequel, although I haven't watched it in a while. But I'll definitely talk about 28 Weeks Later someday. And I am looking forward to 28 Years Later, which I think it might be coming out next year or in 2026. I'm not sure, but I am looking forward to 28 Years Later. Um, one thing I will say that really sucks about this movie, it's not the movie itself, it's the fact that DVD and Blu-ray copies of this movie are out of print and are really hard to find, and they can be pretty expensive to buy online, and on top of that, it's not available on any streaming services, well, none that I know of at the time of recording this video. So, if you ever see a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this movie, I would recommend you check it out. I would recommend you pick it up because it's pretty hard to find. I actually used to have the DVD copy of this movie, but I got rid of it a couple months ago as I planned to upgrade it to Blu-ray. But little did I know at the time, I didn't realize it was out of print until months later. I'm like, ah, shit, I should not have got rid of it. But at the time of me recording this video... Like, earlier before I recorded this video, I found a copy on eBay for 15 bucks, surprisingly, and I just ordered it, and I'm hoping to be getting it in the mail soon. But, I know that's a little off topic there, but I just wanted to point that out that this movie is pretty hard to find on physical. But it goes to show, physical media is important. Anyways, 28 Days Later, great zombie film, and if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's one of Danny Boyle's best films. And I'm giving 28 Days Later an 8.7 out of 10. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, as always, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and share the video. And more videos will be coming out soon, so stay tuned for more. Anyways guys, that's all i got to say. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. And yeah, have a great day everybody. Peace out. Bye-bye.